What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video and today we have what if Issei was betrayed and became a villain? A boy who once walked the path of heroism. Now, after being humiliated and ignored for his deeds, chooses to walk the path of villainry. Every time he did something, he was always looked down upon and hated for his actions he did not perform. Now armed with something dangerous and together. With the only one that trusted him and was with him, they will show that they're enemies, that they are not to be underestimated or looked down upon ever again. And this is going to be what if Issa was betrayed and became a villain. Let's try to hit 1,000 likes for this first episode of this series. It's an absolute banger. And if you guys want to know exactly when I upload slash my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. It really would be appreciated. Now, without any further intrusion, let's go and thank my balance breakers. Aunt Lewis, Lachlan Yates, Jordan Patchow, Night Ammo, Refeek135, which is a Joker Not Drive member, Ryan Monk, Keep Saying 21, Undefined Truth, VR Wolf, and Dark Phoenix, another Joker Not Drive member, ZK2000, Jen Byun, Chaotic Raven, Nota Tracks, Dr. Underscore MLG Underscore is the Bomb, Grim Fireshot Gamer, Jerry Vive, Soros Bonder, Rob the King, and Zero Fusion. Thank you so much for becoming a balance breaker. And thank you, there is a brand new tier called Juggernaut Drive, which Dark Phoenix and Refeek135 have now joined. I really do appreciate you guys, as well as all my balance breakers and all my channel members in general, but that is obviously, once again, a normal thanks. So, Obviously, if you want to see me react to High School DxD or many other animes in general, go ahead and head over to my Patreon. Shout out to my Patreon members, which is David Tanner, Ryuga, Lachlan Yates, The Black Dragon Emperor, Brendan Dawson, Stripal Anchor, Mark Bacon, Sharklock, Jay Dawson, and Kefir Windsor. Thank you so much for becoming a Patreon member. It really is appreciated. I cannot thank you enough, and I really do, like, I, I seriously do, really do appreciate it. I don't know how to even say anything else, but... If you guys are a path of actual, if you guys like enjoying villainry or getting revenge on your enemies, no, I'm joking. Remember, okay, this is just a story. So, I'm just, uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get into what if he say was a villain. Part one The prologue, having enough. Issei looks down at the party that was happening. This was due to the sealing and defeat of the Beast of Apocalypse, known as the Triexa, or 666. This was due to the party happening at the Hyota residence. Everyone was present, from the majority of the faction leaders to his friends, he noticed, the Occult Research Club. Student Council and several of the other faction members as well. He was holding a glass of Diet Coke, washing it down. Honestly, why do I even bother? Issei asked with a disappointed sigh. This party was for Issei, or this is what many would think. However, that was not the case. It was for his younger brother, Dai Hyoto, the bearer of Kromkonch. Every single girl chose him to be his lover. No matter what happens, they'd think that he was the hero that fought their battles and defeated the Beast of the Apocalypse. Oh, how they were wrong. Issei was one to fight all their battles, but every time, Dai took the credit for the battles. No matter how much he talked about it, many refused to believe it, so much so that they considered him to be nothing but a liar and a deceiver. One might even think that he was hated among the factions. Furthermore, Dai and his friends spread an infamous rumor of him being a pervert. This caused his life to worsen even more. No matter where he was, whether in the human world or the supernatural world, nobody ever listened. Nobody accepted him and hated him even more, except for a very few people. One of them was Drake, his only best friend. Initially, their relationship was platonic, but eventually they became close friends. Drake was so trusted that he revealed his secrets to him. The trust was more than his own family. The other was Nyx, the primordial goddess of night. One might even think that they are lovers, or at least very least who know about him. That being only Drake and a few others, she had faith in him more than anyone else. It was because of his desire and determination to save Invergold from her clutches. That made her fall from him. This made Nyx jealous. She had never had anyone save her before. However, what happened next angered her to no bounds. Invergold, like the rest, was unfortunately manipulated by Dai into thinking that he was her knight in shining armor. As a result, she hated Issei, which nearly caused him to fall into despair. Nynx was arrested. She saw Issei 
having a book of complete sadness. She looked at him in the eye before teleporting away. So if you guys don't understand what's going on right now, basically Issei has this, there's this other person called Dai, which is supposedly his brother. And Issei, it, this person's taking all the credit for all of his work and stole all of his lovers. And so he's basically heartbroken currently. After a while, he started to visit her in secret without anyone detecting him. And since nobody would know of his disappearance, since many refused to care where he went, he managed to sneak in and meet Nyx. During their fight, Issei noticed her jealousy, which he realized it later, as he wanted to ask her about it. When he got there, however, he was surprised by a hug from the primordial goddess. She had magic seals all over her body to prevent her from escaping. Moments later, he reciprocated the hug, and they both had a nice conversation. There, he realized Nyx was always done. Not even her brother, Ibrius, visited her. He never truly understood why she kidnapped Ingegold, but he assumed that was because she wanted someone to talk to. When it was time for him to leave, Nyx did not want him to go, but she understood that they would come to know. Issei made a promise of visiting her again, and perhaps one day freeing her, which made her blush. She was happy to have someone that she was willing to talk to, and over time, they started to share their secrets. As time passed, she was angry and disappointed in the factions of the girls, especially Invigold, and hated Dai even more. And time and time again, she started to fall for Issei, and one day, she would confess to Issei. Issei became depressed. He still couldn't find a way to free her. Without her being tracked by the factions or worse, getting her injured or killed. Despite this, he refused to get up. Partner. The boosted gear manifested as the dragon spoke his best friend, Drake. I know, Drake. No matter what I do, I can't find a better way to free her. But there has to be something that should be helpful in a way. Try using the Book of Conceptual Records, your other sacred gear, Drake suggested with a bit of hope. The Book of Conceptual Records was legendary and mythical book. It was a book shown in brown covering with golden emery surrounding its edges. It's the symbol of God on its spine, which was gold in color. Both front and the back of the cover had additional gold emery, which looked like a planet on it. Issei summoned the book. He looked at it in amazement. He found this book while he was away for a mission. Nobody knew of this, and the gear accepted him without any problem, as if it chose its new wielder. <clears throat> Once opened, the book had records of every sacred gear up to date, including the undiscovered ones like the narrated Kyrie of Alpaca Tyrant, which she had never heard of. This also included the Longinus, as well as other sacred gears known. In addition to that, it also allows the user to create any sacred gear so he desires. He tried to, this with divine dividing, and lo and behold, two wings came on his back, which performed the same way regular divine dividing would do. He could even alter the gear and remove any and all limitations, allowing him to use the gear to their fullest potential. In other words, he can clone the said sacred gear and use it to its full potential without the original user being able to sense, or a heaven system detecting its presence. This was great for the factions not finding out about the sacred gear. Issei theorized this sacred gear to be beyond Longinus tier. Anyone who wielded this was almost akin to a god. Nothing, Drake. Nothing. I got nothing, Issei spoke in a tone of full sadness. Come on, partner. You never gave up fighting against the Triexa. You give up fighting any of your former foes? Why are you giving up now? Drake cheered his host up. Drake remembered that aside from Nynx and himself, Great Red and Orphis trusted him as well. They were able to seal the reality of Dai Hyoto. Orphis even went so far as to help them see, but nobody trusted her. She eventually gave up as well. Issei started to rack his brain. He always found a way to defeat his foes, but only everyone only saw Dai to be their savior. It then clicked. He had to wait for the right opportunity. However, he refused to help the factions ever again. They were never grateful to him to begin with, and only insulted and humiliated him. They are on their own, and when they have to deal with a bigger threat, Issei will not help them. Never again. Unless he has something to gain in return. No more selflessness. I have an idea, Issei spoke with a tone of seriousness. Partner, are you sure of this? You know they live in your house, right? Drake spoke with a hint of concern. Indeed. We are not helping them. Let Dai do it himself. I no longer will help them ever again, unless I have something to gain. They are on their own. Let's see how far they get, Issei declared with a cold tone. Drake could only watch his host with surprise. The boy that once helped the factions was gone, killed by the same people he protected and cherished unconditionally. He was also not a big fan of the factions either, and he could not blame him for having the thought process. But what is your goal now? 
Now that you don't want to help the supernatural faction, Strake had asked after declaring with conviction, I desire peace if anything, and it does not matter if innocent blood needs to be filled. I never achieved peace because of my brother twisting the story, making the whole world think that I'm the bad guy. People like them are not worth protecting, Issei responded with conviction. But we cannot judge people, buddy, especially when we ourselves are not perfect. Drake spoke with slight sadness and anger in his voice. Easy looked at him and responded, As long as humanity exists, hate will also exist. Love ends when betrayal begins. And I have always experienced an endless stream of betrayal. No matter what I do, I am always the bad guy. To them, Issei spoke with anger. He no longer felt sad for his past with them, but now he was angry. You are willing to change the world even if it stains your hands with innocent blood? Drake asked in a serious tone. Drake, I no longer desire to do good things, but I desire to do great things. Issei opened the book. He saw the information of every single sacred gear, which he could replicate and use for himself. He would broke it out at Nyx long time ago, but this would make her hunted, and he did not want her to risk her life. He was going to make the factions release her one way or another. This was one of his new goals. In that case, the Red Dragon Emperor is with you, best buddy, Drake spoke with a tone of happiness. Issei smiled at the gear as he closed the book and desummoned so that no one could see it. Thank you, my friend. I know that you will be on my side, Issei spoke with a genuine smile. Before getting up and heading to his room, he will find a way to do so. Now, scene change, time skip. Okay. One year later, we're at the Underworld, and it's 5.30 a.m. One year has passed since the events of Sealing the Beast. There were three heroes. There were Dai Hyoto, the youngest of the Hyoto children. He looked just like the older brother Issei. However, unlike them, he was fair-skinned and had shorter hair. He wielded twin gauntlets called Crescent Moon Gauntlets that held the soul of the strongest evil dragon, Krom Crunch. The second was Akia Hyoto, the younger sister of Hyoto, Issei Hyoto. She was a beautiful brown-haired girl with long wavy hair. She was also had a huge chest, as well as a pretty face. One might say that she had a lot of similarities in terms of looks compared to Issei. She wielded the Chaos Talon, a blue talon that covered her entire left hand. It almost felt like the whole weapon covered his hand. And finally, the third hero, Valerie Lucifer, was described to be a slim young woman below average height. She has long, white hair, which curly slides at the ends, which two bangs framing her face and reaching down to her chest. Her hairstyle's most distinctive trait is short, upward ponytail obtained by gathering and trying hair covering her forehead. She has large blue eyes and a curvy, voluptuous body with large breasts. All three were considered heroes, but one of them was outstanding hero. However, four months and an entity had attacked them, he was a bald-headed being with blue-haired marks that had a blue tattoo on his forehead and all were two meters tall in height. He had a metal jaw and wore skin-tight red-colored body armor draped in half cape black cloth. The entity had decided to judge one of the Seraphs of Heaven, that being Gabriel, for the sins that she had committed. None of the angels under her could stop him. He judged her in the name of the Father. He once used his abilities to completely traumatize her, causing her to have a lifeless look. Many didn't understand whom the entity talked about. In the aftermath, Gabriel was completely traumatized. She often used to scream in what seemed to be as many as pain and fear at random times. It was not due to fear of the man, or fear itself. Several wanted to look for him, but he was never seen again. At least not until two months ago, where he attacked members of Team DXD, leaving several injured. Some even hospitalized, many assumed Dai would be able to stop him, but he failed to do so. Furthermore, the man used a trick that turned Imigals singing against Dai or anyone that was a dragon or have dragon-based sacred gears. As a result of helping them, it instead hurt them, which the entities seemed to be enjoying a lot, especially when Dai was suffering. In the aftermath, Imigal realized that her singing was actually hard harming her friends, causing her to stop using it. Since, now that she has many others deemed her sacred gear to be dangerous, this caused a great blow to her morale, because she loves singing. Now, scene change, we're in the Underworld Conference Room at 6am. Many leaders have gathered here in the conference room, that being the different factions from the Devil's side. It was the four Satans, Sir Zex, Lucifer, Seraphal, Leviathan, Ajuka, Beelzebub, and Falbium, Asimotus. They were accompany accompanied by Grafia Lufage and Sir Zex's Queen. From the Angel's side was Archangel Michael, 
Seraph Gabriel, Seraph Raphael, and they were accompanied by their escorts, Grishilda, Korda, and Yuri Nishoto. From the Fallen Angels side were the Governor uh, Shemazin, along with Catrice, Azazel, Barkyol, and Pamin. From the Yokai side were Kyuin Yakasa and her daughter Kyono. From the Vampires, it was Eldium, Kanshin, and the Valerie Tefs. From the North side was All Father Odin, his wife Freya, their sons Thor and Vidar, and as well as the Valkyrie Gondol, who was Rosbice's grandmother. From the Greek side was the God of Light and Zeus, Goddess of Mirage Hera, Gods of the Seas of the Poseidon, Virgin, Goddess of Hunt Artemis, and finally the Greek God of Messages, Hermes. From the Hindu side, there was one member from the triad, that being Shiva, along with his wife Parvati, and God of Thunder, Indra. Along with Shiva's escort, Malabi, along he hated in being in some room as Indra, he had to tolerate him for a few hours. And finally, from Team DXD, where the current leader, Dulio Grisholder, Michael Joder, the sub-leader, Sung Wukong, First Generation, along with Rias's Parage, Sona's Parage, Sikivera's Parage, Sarah Org's Parage, and finally, Dai's Parage, which Tobio Ikusa slash dog team, Yulong and Valerie Volley Lucifer's team. Is everyone here? Sir Zex asked, gaining nods from most of them. In that case, let us begin. I think you are familiar with the bald man's attack, and it had happened in span of two months, right? Sir Zex asked with a grim tone. We all are, Sir Zex. He took down the DXD team like they were mere children. Azazel spoke with the neon no tone. He was not happy with what happened. One is a coincidence, two, that's an attack. Zeus gritted his teeth in anger. Then he banged his table and shouted, If he attacks another time, we might lose someone important. Zeus looked, earning looks, shocked and surprised. Understanding the situation, Michael spoke, trying to calm Zeus down. We understand the situation, but shouting will not help clear the matters, Lord Zeus. Michael's words managed to calm them down, while Zeus apologized for his actions, with his pantheon calming him down just to make sure. I tried dividing his power, but it didn't work, Volley spoke with an irritated tone. She hated losing to him. The gathered everyone's attention. He did not even fight against us seriously. We were just mere children to him. Dai spoke with a frustrated tone while clenching his fist. He has somehow dealt with us, but even then, I did not sense any will of him to fight against us, despite us losing to him, Sung Wukong spoke seriously, causing Dai to grit his teeth in anger. This was be... This being was able to possess as an angel, use telekinesis, and throw the DXD team around like they were ragdolls. In the use of music, Miss Leviathan against you, he is not to be taken lightly, Athena spoke while pointing to the DXD team. I am sorry. Had I not been allowed him to mimic my songs, none of this would have happened, Imagold spoke. While putting her head down, she was guilty for being responsible for it. It's not your fault, Imagold. Don't blame yourself for something you had no control of, Volley spoke. While putting her hand on her, trying to calm her down, Albion agreed to her carrier's words. However, Tobio did not have a look of tranquility. It was after he saw a recording that belonged to another man's fight that it happened with someone he never expected. Many of you might not believe. The only one that was able to face off against the man was Issei Hyoto. Tobio Tobio spoke, surprising many. Everyone refused to believe that Issei would fight against him, let alone tie with him. You're kidding! All he does is get in everyone's way, Volley explained eagerly. No, take a look, Tobio showed the video recording. Everyone looked at the recording that Tobio had played on the video player, as they saw Issei himself face off against the man recording. Now, let's go into the recording. So you are the one that is getting in my way, huh? The man spoke with the screen, with Issei looking him dead in the eye. Issei removed a book, and the pair of two wings appeared on his back, and this was Divine Dividing. The man chuckled watching this as he asked. Divine Dividing, huh? The gear of that girl. What makes you think that would work? The man taunted Issei. However, he was unaffected. It might just work, who knows? It is that Volley doesn't even have access to the full potential of the gear. I managed to unlock it, Issei spoke seriously when he asked. What should I call you? Do you even have a name? Call me Malik, and today is going to be your end, Issei Hyoto. Malik spoke with a grin, despite it not being visible. Very well then, Malik. Don't blame me for what happens next. Balance break. Issei entered into his balance breaker. It... Looked just like Volley's own balance breaker. Malik tried to use telekinesis, but Issei had a simple dagger on his left side that nullified the balance break. Damn it! You have that blade! The gear 
That counters my telekinesis, Malak shouted angrily as Issei started to use Divide on him. He started to lose power. Issei went towards Malak as he used the Red Blade to fight off against Issei, with the latter being surprisingly good with a sword, blocking most of his strikes and evading some of it with ease. He then slashed Malak, causing his grip to loosen. Issei ended the fight with a kick as he dropped his blade. He was on his knees as Issei pointed his blade to his neck. Any last words? Just to see you. With that, Malik started to glow, forcing Issei behind. He then escaped a while later. There was no Malik or Blade with him. Issei looked at his hand and gritted his teeth and exclaimed, Damn it! Issei flew away with his wings. After Malik escaped, the recording then stopped. Now, the end of the recording. Many were shocked seeing this. However, several were angry, especially Volley, Albion, and Dai. Dai assumed that he should not deserve this power. While Albion and Volley were angry due to him having copied Divine Dividing to defeat him when they failed to do so. Damn him! Volley said angrily. His aura was radiating through the office as Azazel shouted in response. I I know you are mad, Volley, Albion, but please calm down. There is nothing we can do. It's all in the past. Volley looked at him and calmed down for mere moments later. She took a deep he took a deep breath and gritted her teeth while trying to control her anger. She was not happy about what happened. It seemed that Brad is hiding his true strength. He is more than what he is. Odin spoke while rubbing his chin. His tone was calm, but he was worried about his strength. All this time he was hiding it. And there was no change in the system. He was able to copy one of the Longinus and its abilities, not to mention that book allowed him to copy the gear. We don't know what that is, Michael spoke with annoyance. He was not happy that the fact that Issei had a Longinus like that, without him coming to know. But despite this, some found a recording to be off, especially those that were smart, like Emily Kurnza, Ajuka Beelzebub, Sona Citri, Seraphal Leviathan, and Azazel. Even Tobio and Athena were put off by the fight, as they knew both of them seemed to be acting. And we're very good at it as well, not to mention everyone noticed the book seeing it for the very first time. Is it just me, or was this sort of an act, Ajuka thought, while well, both of them did not change their places when they fought. Either way, I will be sending Grafia to fetch Issei. He should be here in a few minutes, hopefully. Sir Zek spoke with a serious tone. With the room, after leaving the room, the others could only wait for him to show up. That disgrace of my brother hid his real strength from me. I will make him regret it, I thought with anger and hatred. All he could do was wait for him to show. Now, scene changed Yoda residence at 7pm. Issei was sitting on the roof of the residence. He looked for the mortress blade. It still needed to be worked upon. It was a sacred gear that could kill gods. He then spoke. I need to work on this. The gods are known to have strong fertility. Issei spoke in a calm tone. He then remembered the camera that was present. Signing, he wondered to know the factions that would react when they found out about this. So many would want answers for me. I can imagine that this will happen, especially with them. Issei spoke coldly, and then the word them was spoke with disgust. Moments later, a magic circle appeared. It was Grafia Lucifage. Seeing him on sitting on the roof, he gave a cold glare to her and asked, what do you want, Grafia? Hyodo, the faction leaders have asked you to come to the meeting. Grafia spoke with a serious tone as Issei scoffed and responded. And if I don't come, what will you do? Issei spoke with a mocking smile. Then you give me no choice. Grafia was ready to bring him in by force. Issei sighs in response as the book comes in hands. I can make any sacred gear that will siphon your powers away, and I can use it for myself. You will be powerless without them. Not to mention I can create another gear that can do the same thing Malak did to the Seraph if I wanted to. Issei spoke in a cold tone. As the two claws appeared, he was ready to fight. Despite her neutral look, Grafia had beats of sweat. She remembered the hallucinations that Malak put Gabriel through. She had a slight fear of what Issei will do to her. Issei then remembered that this could be one of the ways that he could free Nyx, but at the same time he has to be careful. He did not trust any of the faction leaders, and they can try to remove the book of conceptual records from him. I need to make some security systems to the book. Let's see how the factions will remove, me, will remove them from me. Issei thought with a mocking grin. He looked at Grafi, who was worried on what Issei will do to her as he spoke. Let's get this over with. Issei spoke with a cold tone. He dispelled the book in the gears and headed with Grafia to the meeting room. Now, scene change, Underworld Conference Room at 7.30 a.m. All the leaders in the room heard two footsteps approaching them. Dai hid his annoyance with a fake smile, while some gods looked at him with curiosity. Easy looked at the scene with no interest. He looked at the floor, wanting to go home and work on the Mortress Blade. It still needed to be worked on. 
Thank you, Grafia, for bringing, me, bringing him here, Sir Zek spoke with a smile to his queen. With the latter nodding and leaving, he turned his attention to Issei, who was not interested in even looking at them. Brother, have some self-respect for the leaders! A Akia spoke clearly, annoyed by her brother's attitude. He did not bother to hear his sister's voice as Azazel spoke. Boy, we need to ask you some questions about Malik. Will you answer them? Azazel asked in a serious tone. No, Issei responded while looking at the former governor general dead in the eye. You're not going to answer, Hyoto? Don't you realize how important this is? Sona spoke in a serious tone. You want me to answer, huh? What do I get in return? Issei spoke while thinking that this would be a perfect chance for his forward his request. Kid. You have no right to demand us for information, Zeus exclaimed in an aggrieved, angered tone. He was about to get up with Issei speaking with a chuckle. He showed no fear to the King of Olympus. Information ain't cheap. You want me to tell you about Malik? You need to give me something valuable in return. Is it just that he does not want to help his brother? Azia spoke with a glare. She was not happy with Issei had spoken, to which Issei smiled. You're right on that one, my dear foster sister. I'm going to not going to help anyone till I get something valuable in return. And where the f*** is my Diet Coke? I ordered it 15 minutes ago, Issei shouted in annoyance. Issei's words made many appalled by what he just spoke. Everyone was shocked by his attitudes, while the leaders were embarrassed at the pillar of the faction's brother and his attitude. A few minutes later, a maid showed up with a can as Issei spoke with happiness. Finally, my Diet Coke. Issei opened up and drank a little to check his taste. He looked to them and spoke. Now, we may continue with the negotiation or should everyone go home? Your choice. Well, Sir Zek spoke rubbing his head. What is it you want in return? Hmm, let me think. I demand the release of the primordial goddess Nynx in return. Issei spoke with a smile. The drink really refreshed his state. I refuse, Zeus responded in a cold manner. He hated Issei's attitude and Issei spoke with a shrug. Well then, you're on your own with Malik. Are you crazy? She will control Imigold and attack us, Dice scolded his older brother, who didn't seem to care about the situation. Not my monkeys, not my circus. This is the price for the information, he says, spoke with a glare. He hardly cared what happens to Imigold at this point. In that case, we can copy his memories to see Malik, Dice spoke with fury, he responded. Try it, brother. I can make a gear, making me immune to memory siphoning. You only thought of what? Because you are surrounded, Dai taunted Issei with a mocking smile. However, Issei was unaffected. Then go ahead. I don't think your harem of monkeys will stop you, Issei responded in a mocking tone. With Dai going ahead to do so, only to be stopped by Krom Crunch, who manifested the same. Don't do it! It's a trap! Krom spoke, wanting his host. stopping his host from making a stupid mistake. Many were shocked by this. Then Issei spoke. It seems like there are some smart people in this room, Issei spoke with a smile as Krom responded. Not to mention. What you are hiding up, your ace up your sleeve, Krom spoke with a slightly worried tone. I was trying to sleep, but then they had to ruin it. Don't they, Krom Crunch? As an unknown voice was heard, those that knew of the voice were shocked as Zazel spoke with a shock. You are the Red Dragon Emperor! Indeed I am. And before you ask, this is the original boosted gear, not copy created by the book, Issei spoke with a smirk as Rias asked. But how did you, you only showed us, you're, you're twice critical. I saw no reason to show you this. Plus you never asked before, Issei spoke with a neutral tone. They never bothered to ask him about his sacred gear since Issei's manifested during his fight against Rainer, but reverted to a twice critical form as soon as after the fight. Not to mention, Dai took credit for beating the fallen angel, which Issei made Issei lose Azia as well. As well, she saw Dai as her survivor. Not to mention, Rhea supported Dai's claims, making Azia believe that Issei was just a perverted liar. That's right, Krau and Bat, my partner, made the right choice of not telling you anything. That's right, Krau and Bat, my partner made the right choice of not telling you anything, Drake spoke with a serious... Volley, Lucifer connected the dots. If he was the Red Dragon Emperor, and if he never used his sacred gear in his fight against Malak, that meant he was much more powerful than what he let on. And if we had on the book, then we're done for, Volley thought. It's fear. Afraid of what Issei is capable of, she looked down upon him, and was worried of what he might do next. Since you have the gear, that makes you... Zeus was interrupted when Volley spoke. No, no, you don't understand. He never used the boosted gear in his fight against Malak, Volley spoke with fear, scared of what Issei was potentially capable of. He is way above all of us, Volley ended with a chilling message to everyone. They see Issei grinning manically. The desire of Volley to fight his internal rival was gone. 
That's right, with the Book of Conceptual Records and the Boost of Gear, I am unstoppable. <laughs> Issei laughed manically, with many looking with shock and fear. And watch this, Issei generated some fire, which he added cold had no effect on the flames. The boosted gear has no limiter. Michael spoke with fear, looking at the monster in front of him. Everyone understood what Issei was capable of, and they were worried of what he might do next. Exactly, Issei spoke with a tone of innocence as he continued, Look, I just desire peace, that's all. But I can never have that because of him, Issei continued while giving Dai repeated glances. Well... That was some meeting. I just want to live my life in tranquility, but I can't because of you. I think I should sever you just because I wielded the boosted gear and have the power to do so. Nothing is free, and you should know that. Issei mentioned, obvious present to them. Mani did not note how to answer as Zeus spoke. You don't understand what's at stake here. Innocent lives are going to die because of your selfishness. Zeus spoke while gritting his teeth. Several of the leaders agreed to Zeus. Like I said, all you need to do is accept my offer and the information is yours, Issei spoke with a smile. And besides, there are people that have betrayed the factions for more information, right, Azazel? Issei spoke, looking towards Azazel and Vali, who both couldn't help but agree to his points. Look, brother, stop your arrogant attitude and help us, Akia scolded him, to which Issei scoffed and responded, you're challenging me, Issei said. Akia gulped in nervousness. Her brother was not to be meddled with. Issei then continued. I have heard enough. Stop this attitude. Stop that attitude. Well, I will stop. Because you ain't getting anything from me. Like I said before, not my monkeys, not my circus. Your problems are no longer mine. You can do what you want, Issei headed out. Using a ring that he had created allows him to create portals. Issei turned his head to the side and spoke with a cold tone. Just let me know when you're ready to change your mind, okay? You know what to do if you need the information. Issei teleported back, leaving several angry at what happened, especially Dai and Zeus. They were helpless as Issei gave them a clear message. Either you accept my deal or suffer death and destruction. Destruction. And that is the end of the prologue. Chapter 1. The Unbearable Truth. Uh, basically, the first half is like a little bit of a recap. So, we'll, we'll start from like this point. After Issei left and headed back to his house, the faction leaders were in a rocky situation. They had information from Issei, and he was nowhere to be found. He just disappeared. Dai wanted to teach Issei a lesson, but there was no Issei. He wanted to beat the truth out of from Issei, but without him, there was no way to do so. He gritted his teeth in anger and accepted defeat. Two days had passed since he was gone. Nobody knew where he went. It was like the earth swallowed him up. However, things have only gotten worse later on. As Malak once again attacked, he attacked the factions with much greater force, leaving more casualties. He was laying waste to the factions and wherever he went. Nobody could find a way to stop him so far. This left a bitter taste in his mouth. Issei had come back from his visit. As he was not in the mood to deal with any of his family members, he was working on the final touches of the Mortress Blade. The god slaying sacred gear was almost done when his door suddenly exploded. What the? Issei exclaimed in surprise. He saw the door was exploded by none other than the voluptuous black-haired beauty. Issei was not happy seeing her, however. He closed the book, and it disappeared. There is something called knocking, Hajima, Issei shouted as he was ready to teach her a lesson, but he saw Akino smiling towards him. Oh, that is just punishment for insulting my antita. It's going to get a whole lot worse for you, <laughs> Akino said with a sweet smile as lightning cracked between her palms and fingers. Akino may have the same smile, however, she was internally furious. Nobody insults her darling and gets away with it. Issei, on the other hand, was not the same Issei that would normally take a beating from someone like her as he spoke with a growl. Don't blame me for what happens next, then. Unbeknownst to Akino, Issei's eyes had turned red. He was ready to leave a scar on her, to deal with her once and for all. He had a sinister grin. Scene change. Akino came outside the room with a look on her face. With a lost look on her face, she walked aimlessly towards the couch and slumped on it with a lifeless look on her face. Akino sat on the couch. 
Whatever Issei did to traumatize her, she saw Dai Hyoto passing by. She spoke, Dai, Akuna said, really trying to garner his attention. Not now, Akuna, I have some work to do, Dai spoke. However, when he saw Akuna in the city, he shouted and warned, Akuna, what happened? Dai exclaimed as he rushed to Akuna. He did not know what to do. Akuna failed to respond, as Dai assumed that it was Malik's doing. Out of the girls, Akuna was the most emotionally dependent on Dai, but Dai did not know what to do. He had no choice but to call the other girl to leave, as he had a lot of work to do. The other girls did do this as was Malik's doing. His attacks have become more aggressive in just two days. If anything, they believe that this is just the beginning, and the fact he managed to Sneak here showed how dangerous he is, making them fear him. Issei is walking across the field. Malik is surrounded by the burning remains of the Gagar. Issei and Nyx are seen by the side looking at the screen. A book shows... Up as Issei comes in the strongest red dragon emperor, Dai Hyoto is seen with a sinister smirk, with Rhea standing next to him. Ozzy and other girls are fighting against Malak using magic. Akia looks and walking through the puddle, the ORC, student council, volley team, team slash dog are shown, all as a pair of angry eyes glare at them. Issei looks at the book, remembering his past well. The visions of the factions falling apart. Imigal looks at the figure of Dai as she crushes it. Tears falling from her eyes, anger on her face. A white-haired female angel, and it had a silver-haired woman watch their factions with disdain. Invoca closed her eyes, and looks at Dai with a determined look. Issei is on his knees, his past haunting him, as a family photo shows up with a slash on it. Issei is separated from his family. He looks at his brother in the eye as they both clash their swords. That is the opening end. Invoca looked at her condition and sadness. She had been slipping into deeper slumbers over and over again. The past few days, she assumed that her sickness has gone due to the medicine that Dai gave her. However, in reality, it was Issei that made the medicine. How is this possible? Imigold spoke with worry and fear. Imigold noticed that her illness returning was not a good sign. She had approached Dai multiple times, but he ignored her. This caused her great sadness and depression. Furthermore, her illness reduced her magic power significantly, which almost made her make even more weak than she already was. Why, Dai? Why are you ignoring me? Inva Golden murmured with sadness as she wanted Dai to support her more than ever. But every time she approached him, he ignored her, making excuses of either training or preparing for another meeting. Inva Gold left the room. She was worried her sickness would return. She wanted to go for a walk to refresh her mind. Inva Gold had heard some of the upstairs talking to someone as she looked. She heard more noise. Yeah, the Mortress Blade needs some work. After, even the gods will not be a problem for me to deal with. The person spoke in a calm voice. Issei, Imigold spoke in a surprised tone. She wondered what Issei was talking about, and against her better judgment, she headed up there. Little did she know that her visit to the top will prove to be a wake-up call for her. Scene change, Imigold reached the roof when she saw Issei talking to a cloaked man. She wondered what he was talking about. Ever since Malik's attack, many had wanted to talk to Issei in order to convince him to help, but every time he was either missing or never showing up, she either wondered what he was doing here or who he was talking to. Indeed, after that we will be unstoppable. No god or devil will be able to touch us, the figure spoke with a smile. Emigo was shocked and horrified who Issei was talking to. Even then, it's a shame that the factions are in a toss. I mean, they have no way of defending with the current threat, Issei spoke in a mocking tone. Not to mention their hero is nothing but a poser and a liar. It it is a shame that the factions are fools and their leaders are nothing but prideful idiots. The cloaked man spoke with a mocking tone. This irritated and angered Ivergold as she thought. Who the hell is he? Ivergold thought as he angered as they insulted her lover and the rest of the factions. I guess... But then again, the factions are not my problem. They can do whatever they want, whenever they want, Issei spoke in a cold tone, not caring for the factions anymore. His voice was cold and nitrogen iced, with no warmth and emotion at all. Imigal was surprised by this. She had never seen Issei speak in such a cold manner. Every time Issei spoke to her, it was calm and warm manner, but she was cold to him, thinking that he was a liar. Speaking of which, what more sacred gear are you planning to recreate? The man asked with interest, wondering what Issei was thinking. I am planning to recreate the true Longinus. Once the Mortress Blade is done, Kao Kao will never be able to use the full potential of the sacred gear due to the gods willing limiting the seer's abilities, capabilities. I cannot blame him for that, and besides, even his other balance breaker, Polar Knight, 
Tartavon is pretty capable, Easy spoke while rubbing his chin. His tone was complete of analysis of the gear. That's true. I mean, you did damage to defeat him, and before finding the book, but then again, your brother has always took credit for what you did, right? The man spoke with a slight sadness in his tone. Don't feel sad, it's pointless. And besides, I think medicine for Imigold should be wearing off very soon. Easy spoke in a neutral tone. Imigold was surprised by this. How would Issei know about the medicine? Dai was the one that gave it to me, Imigold thought in disbelief. But even then, why did you help her back then? The man asked Issei's side. I loved her. Once upon a time, that is why I gave her the medicine. Even then, it was temporary fix. Since it was still a prototype stage, that is why the temporary. But then she chose my brother, Issei spoke with a sad tone. Honestly, it still pained me back then that she was with my brother. And even then, I tried to convince her that I was the one that saved her. But then, Issei trailed off in sadness. She called you a liar and went to your brother. The man ended it with equal sadness. Issei only looked away and spoke with a sad tone. Yeah, Imigul was surprised by this. She knew of Issei's feelings for her. But she belonged to die. She chose him. Because he was the one to save her. She refused to believe him, and many others did not support Dai, did support Dai, so he believed in him. That was her savior, and Issei was a liar. My heart was hurting seeing those two together, and my soul was dying from seeing them together. But I guess I need to accept the truth that she wasn't meant for me, Issei ended with a sad tone. Okay, but even then, that doesn't answer my question properly. If you knew she was rude, then why should you have let her wither away? Why did you give her the medicine? The man asked Issei, who responded, Anyone who would have helped her. I just did the right thing back then, Issei murmured the last part. You're a good person, Issei. You have to sometimes get over your love. She wasn't meant for you. You realize this. You have to find... The one you love, the man gave his words of wisdom, as he continued not to mention, you saved her from Nyx, and I doubt that she would be the same if you hadn't reached at the right time. But just like the others, she is blinded by the lies, and Wiggle kept her mouth. She refused to believe that this is happening. She looked at Issei and eventually decided to come out of the shadows. Issei and a man looked at her. He was worried the man's secret identity would be revealed. However, he noticed that Inville had a look of sadness and anger. On his face. She raised her hand to slap Issei. However, Issei grabbed her hand before it could reach his face. She struggled to get her hand free. Issei was not happy that she attacked him. The man was ready to defend Issei, but using his free hand, he gave them the signal to stop. You better have a good reason for trying to slap me, Leviathan, Issei exclaimed with fury. Don't lie! You are not the one that saved me! Dai was the one! You are jealous that I am with your brother, Imigul exclaimed with equal fury in her voice. Then why are you here? Why did you slap me? If you don't believe in what I said, then why are you even wasting your time here? If you don't want to believe me, then don't believe my lies, Issei spoke with a cold tone. Issei released her hand and spoke. The next time you slap or hurt me, don't expect me not to fight back, Infigold. This is your last warning, Issei threatened her. Leaving her flabbergasted, she never expected Issei to threaten her. He started to head towards the door and spoke in a mocking tone. I'd rather date a Diet Coke than bottle over you, Issei headed. Headed inside, Infigold shocked. The man earlier spoke. I'm afraid you are wrong. Miss Leviathan. He's lying. I refuse to believe him. He's just jealous that I'm with his brother. We will smoke with a cold tone. No, you are wrong. Or should I say everyone is wrong? Let me show you. The man removed a recording orb and other sacred gear that Issei created with a can of stored videos of the size of 100 terabytes while declaring witnesses the truth. Queen of the false hero. The orb started to glow, revealing a small recording as Imigold would witness something that would shock her. Now we see the recording. Scene change. Dai was seated on the couch. With a smile, he had just made again Invigil's love, with Crom Crunch speaking in pure fury. You are a horrible person for doing this, brother. Die! You have already the entirety of ORC and some members of the student council. You continue to do this to him. You deny him a shred of happiness. Crom hated his current host. He wanted to be free from him as soon as possible, as Dai spoke with an arrogant smile. But you must admit that my plan is going pretty well. The truth will come out one day. I am only helping you because I don't have a choice. When I got sealed in the gear, you are using me for your own benefits. You use my power for your own selfish benefits, Kromkron spoke with a pure cold tone. Filled to the brim with spite, all dragons trapped in the sacred gear can watch 
and not control their host's actions. If they want to use their power, they will. You have no pride, Dai, and even if you have, you have one of the rubbish and even dragon is that, Krom continued in the same tone. And what about it? They will be mine in the future. It will be my wife's, not his, Dai spoke in a sing-along tone. The bearer of Drake will one day crush you and will expose you from the poser and liar that you really are. And one day, that day will come, Kronkrunch spoke with a mocking tone. Always remember this, Die. The first and most common rule is stealing a dragon's love. You broke that rule, Krom ended with a mocking tone. So what? Nobody will come to know. It's likely they will not believe in him, Dot taunted in a mocking manner. I don't think your love will survive, Krom Crunch spoke in a mocking tone. Your actions have consequences, Die. Remember that, Krom Crunch the ended the connection, leaving Die with an overconfident smile knowing that nothing will change. And the recorded ending in the scene changed. Invigold was on her knees, with the man looking at her without any empathy. She had tears in her eyes as she spoke. No, uh, why? Invigold spoke with the shaky, hazy voice that she realized the truth. The man then spoke. But I am not done yet. You should have seen he nearly died for your sake. This happened as before you saw. The man removed another recording gear and showed him an additional recording. Her an additional recording. Now, the recording was playing. Issa was on the ground. He had several wounds on his body. He was passed out with several wounds on his body, as well as a pool of blood on the ground where he was. Partner, stay alive, Drake shouted in worry. Beside him was an unconscious Invigol and a damaged Nink. She was also out of the fight, as her godly killer virgin clothing was destroyed, leaving her naked body. Then, that is when Dai showed up seeing the situation. He had a sinister smile as he spoke. It's time to be the hero. As well, white of beauty, I must admit that my brother has always made good choice in woman. Dai spoke with a grin, looking at Invigold. Dai decided to wake up Invigold and tell her the lie that he was the one that saved her. Drake wanted to reveal the truth, but he made a promise to his partner to keep to himself, hidden from the rest of the supernatural world. He hated that he must follow a promise, even if it ends up hurting his best friend due to his pride. He gritted his teeth in fury, and he wanted to escape the gear and burn die to the very soul, but there was nothing he could do. He was stuck in the gear. After that, he say woke up. When he was being healed up, he saw that die with Invigold, and that broke his heart. He was too weak to talk to Invigold and reveal her truth. Furthermore, Rius and the others were also there, telling that Dai was her savior, and eventually they believed her lies. She believed her lies. The recording ends. The scene changes. Invigold was on her knees. Seeing all of this, she was crying profusely. As her sacred gear reacted to her sadness, seeing that Issei nearly died for her, and Dai was nothing but a bloody liar, she got up from the ground, slowly holding the gem up against her chest. I am sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me, Issei. If Invigold spoke between sobs, she couldn't handle what she just saw. It was a huge slap to her face. Furthermore, she tried to slap Issei in the image of his condition. The man watched the utter coldness as the wind breeze dropped, revealing him to be none other than Malik. Now... Where was the girl who protected that liar with her life? Malik spoke coldly. Before leaving them from here, no reason to give him a goal was unable to identify his voice. It was because he used magic to change his voice. As his, for his aura, he is capable of hiding it. Scene change. The next day, the Hyota residence. 9.30 a.m. And that is where we're going to stop for now, ladies and gentlemen. So, let me know if you guys have do like this story or if you want me to read another one. Because, I mean, I'm somewhat enjoying the villain arc series we have going on here at the same time. Obviously, what if Issei left will be continued with the further chapters. And what if Goku was in high school DxD will be in addition to all the series going on in general. Just because I really want to read something refreshing. And something to do with a lot of power and fighting. Rather than just betrayal and sadness. Because honestly, you know... It's a lot of betrayal stories, but I really do enjoy them. I really do enjoy reading them, but I also want to include some characters that I really do love, like from Dragon Ball and Naruto, etc. You get the point. I've also been watching One Piece. I'm on like episode 165. It's not too bad. It's just, I don't think it's as good as Naruto yet. Maybe it'll get better in the future. I don't exactly know. But anyway... I want to know what you guys thought about the story, and seriously, thank you to my two Juggernaut Drive members, which is Dark Phoenix and Reed Peak 135 I mean, that is a huge, huge bonus to my 
uh, setup and it really helps me upgrade things like I'm gonna get like some new microphones a better camera you know etc things along that line I really do appreciate it and Palpowski's blowing up like it doing really well right now my TikTok's on fire Spartanic's doing really good and bringing more people to actually know what High School DxD is actually makes me happy just because I want them to know what the show is and all the super cool supernatural connections that come along with it and you know verse equalization battles along with dragon ball naruto one piece etc you get the vibe you know bleach all the cool ones demon slayer whatever you get the point thank you so jujutsu kaisen anyway thank you so much for the support ladies and gentlemen if at all possible we could literally hit 1000 likes that'd be absolutely amazing please hit the like button i know you're in the premiere right now or still currently in the premiere hearing me talk so it'd be absolutely amazing if you'd hit the premiere right now 40,000 subscribers is a crazy goal. We're already at 41k. Let's keep it pushing without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen. Spartanic Arts DXD out.